everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, May 21st. I wrote it down. Wow, Courtney, happy Friday Eve. I'm warning you, I'm a little <laughs> scatterbrained today, but I am relieved it's almost <laughs> Friday. <laughs> It is. I feel a little like g giggly. So this could be a total train wreck. <laughs> uh, as it is most days, but that's that's totally fine. Uh, you know. We, so have you guys heard of this thing where every night at 8, 20, and 20 seconds in the year 2020, your clock would read 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 520 is right. So some people were confused. Right, they thought it right. was yesterday because it was May 20th, but technically, I mean, it's, it's every day of the year. It's the time, it's yeah, the time. not the date. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I always have yeah. military time on my phone. Like right now it says 1301 on my phone. And people always think it's so strange, but when you work in television and you're constantly paranoid that you're gonna oversleep and miss an early morning important meeting, I always have it on military time so I accident so I don't accidentally set my alarm for, you know, five PM instead of five AM. Oh, mm. wow, because I've, I've worked in TV, too, and I don't, I've never done that. I just pray to God that I hope I set the right a.m. p.m. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever Gosh, overslept, I learned so though? much from you. What about those early Change mornings that. on the news when you had yes. to be a awake and at the desk? I mean, if you oversleep, what happens? Oh, I mean, a disaster. I can tell you it's o it only happened, I think, uh, once in my entire career um, and one time I mean I literally flew out of bed it, it happened here in Houston <laughs> flew out of bed didn't have a ch chance to put in contact lenses I oh, threw no. everything in my bag and just like cruised in right <laughs> driving with my glasses on and I only brought one contact lens <laughs> so that day the anchor desk you were, you were sort of you were just squinting and furrowing your brow so you could read the prompter <laughs> yeah i had like a had like a one eye thing happening because what was happening is i would always wear my contact lenses right so my glasses i know all my eye doctors and Dr. Tran, please, this is years ago. Um, the, the glasses that I oh, had no. were not the current prescription <laughs> because I always wore my, my contacts, right? So like, it was fine. I don't need them. I mean, I wear them to go to, you know, I'm in bed or whatever, or wake up in the middle of the night, you gotta put your glasses on. They, those were not meant to read a prompter. So literally I had a contact lens on and was trying to Oh my gosh. Read what was in front of me. It was very difficult. The yes. worst. I used yes, to. Yes, total disaster. I, when I was six, let's see, 12. So I was in sixth grade when I first started wearing glasses. And then in eighth grade, I got contact lenses. And I had to wake up probably about an hour early every morning so that I could just get my right? contact lenses in. It was so difficult back then. And soft contact lenses were a new thing. And I remember a couple times losing right. my contacts and searching for them on the bathroom floor only to realize oh. that they had slid yes. up behind my eye, like on top of my and eye, and I they were all folded up. Yes. Oh my gosh, those days were such a pain. And then as I got older, I, I used to stash eyeglasses around the house. So I would have eyeglasses on my bedside table, on the coffee table, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, just so a set of glasses right. was nearby. It's, I did LASIK, so they I guess, there, 10 years right? ago. So they would be there when I needed them. Or I'd sleep in my contacts and forget and wake right. up and everything was even more blur. I, I don't know. That was a... Very bad. <clears throat> yeah, that was a chapter Do you remember recently, I mean, recent, maybe last year or something, I did this. Remember I put like two contacts in one eye and I couldn't <laughs> figure out why I couldn't see? Remember I did that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that happens. Winning! <laughs> you know what? We've all been there. We've all been there. And these days, a little more scatterbrained. Literally, as the show was going, live today you know our opening animation that happens right at 1, 1 p.m. Heather our producers in my ear and she's like prompter prompter because I'm now rolling my own prompter here right and I don't know what it said on the prompter it was like on That's a different tragic, day in a different by the way. chapter yeah it was very it was very confusing hey did you see the news <laughs> alerts this morning Courtney that Lori Lachlan and her husband are actually gonna plead guilty this is a case we've been following for a long time and I think this is fascinating because from the very yeah. very beginning uh, they've said we're innocent this was a mistake we thought it was a, was a charity uh, donation charitable donation and even in the beginning of COVID their attorneys were trying to get the case thrown out and now apparently I guess they're gonna plead guilty right. and hope to 
actually get a deal. Very interesting, huh? Considering that this story has been going on and on and on. Yeah, and, I, and I'm curious about the timing as well. Like maybe they just, you know, let's just do it now. Not that they were waiting for a pandemic, but I'm just saying, you know, other stories obviously are happening and, and they're not getting the play that they would right yeah, during yeah. A, a pandemic. You know what I mean? Um, but it's, it is very interesting because I think it was both daughters, right? Yeah. Um, for the couple. I think so. They, they did this. Um, and yeah, and they pass them off as like these elite athletes and I think one of the, were they both on the rowing team or su allegedly supposed to be on the rowing team and that's where the money was going towards and I don't think either one of them ever held an, an oar or gotten a boat ever you know mm. well that's one of the daughters was on her YouTube channel talking about like yeah I don't really like school so <laughs> I don't really want to go back to school like that was not not good no <laughs> for the case that was not a good look and yeah allegedly their their faces were photoshopped or at least Jade's face was photoshopped onto a rowing or a crew members um, you know head here's what I think I think everyone makes mistakes, right? And when you are a celebrity mm -hmm. and you live in the 100%. the public eye, I mean, Aunt Becky, I grew up watching Aunt Becky on Full House and she was like the greatest ever, right? I used to see her at Trader Joe's in West Hollywood and be like, oh my gosh, it's Aunt Becky, play it cool in the freezer section. And people make mistakes. And I think <laughs> when you're a public figure, 100%. everyone like jumps in. It's amazing too, like people will jump in and pass judgment so, so quickly, right? Just based on the facts that have been reported, like, are you a psychic? Are you a wizard? Do you know these people? Were you there? How do you know that, you know, any of this happened? So uh, allegedly there's enough evidence to say it really did happen. And I believe in second chances and giving them a second chance. I just think it's really interesting that for so long they were saying, no, we didn't do it. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. Oh, by the way, we did it. And let's just serve some jail time and, time and get on with our lives. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that the, the case against them, of course, Felicity Huffman, um, yeah. she's already served her time and pleaded guilty and did all of that. And so, you know, there's something to be said for uh, admitting the wrong, admitting fault yeah. and moving on, right? And for somebody that doesn't and wants to carry it out, granted, you're right, we don't know the circumstances, we don't know point blank, yes or no. I mean, we, we see a lot of the evidence that's out in these stories, right? But, I mean, if they did, and this is what happened, just, you know, pay the fine, pay the price, do, you know, and, and move on. Um, because it's, it's a poor example, and they're not the only ones doing it. You know, they're just big names that yeah. were able to, you know, uh, we could ad identify them, right? We don't know the rest of the non-celebrity people that basically did the same thing. Yeah, well, because and, they had money. And there are folks in Houston who are also connected to this case who have done that. Right. And I think this has been a pattern, you know, for decades where wealthy families or children of wealthy people, maybe they think they're a little more privileged. And so, you know, they're buying the best education allegedly money can buy. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. Let's switch to something a little more uplifting. How about senior photos, Courtney? We got this great email about free drive-through senior photos for Klein ISD. Yeah. And guys, this is great. Mark your calendars for both tomorrow and Saturday because from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. a Demontron collision you can do a drive-through senior photo for free. Again, this is for Klein ISD, a huge school district, the class of 2020, and attendees will receive not only a free lunch, but one free senior portrait and additional photos will be available for purchase. This is such a great idea and uh, in a way that Demontrand is giving back, Courtney. So we figured while this is happening... Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, what were you going to say? This delay is driving me crazy. I know our viewers hate it, oh, too. Oh, I just want to make sure people know that they've got to, um, they Register. have to RSVP. And so the, the, we do have a link on our website. Um, so make sure, because you, you want to RSVP, you just don't want to show up and, and think you're going to be part of this. So make sure you get on the website, go to our website, and we've got a, a link to RSVP to this, because it, it is a great idea. Yeah, it absolutely is. And tomorrow, again, the dates are tomorrow and Saturday, the 22nd and 23rd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So as long as we're chatting about senior photos, uh, we, if you follow our Houston Life Facebook page, you know we've already put out the ask. We want you to share your throwback senior photos with us. I know we're going to be getting some good ones. They're already rolling in. And Courtney, we figured maybe we would revisit <laughs> 
some of your hairstyles of the past. Uh, I mean, high school, I know, was only a couple years ago for it's you, but your hair has changed so much. <laughs> Dramatically, oh, wow. don't you think? Um, yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, it really, it really does. My hair was so wide that the um, it wouldn't fit in the frame. And I'm wearing my mom's earrings um, in that because you know it was cool to do that. Um, yeah, are you just resting got my your head off. like on like the I was, back I was of rocking. a couch or a chair on a what? chin? Your chin, but uh, what's your chin? My chin is oh, on my hand. Oh, that's your shoulder. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, that's my shoulder. That's part of the Argyle sorry, sweater from Benetton. Sorry, your sweater. I thought the sweater, I'm, I'm seriously, forgive like, me. I thought I'm it was part of. like this. <laughs> oh, wow. See, what's funny is <laughs> I know that's you because you say it is, but I would see this photo and honestly, like, where is Courtney in this photo? I just don't, don't see it. The hairstyle, though. <laughs> I really do think you should consider bringing it back, at least for a throwback Thursday. Oh, yeah. There you go. You got the pose down. See? You look exactly mm -hmm. the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Exactly, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. The problem is, like, my, um, my hair um, back in the day was so curly. And people paid money for perms, right? They paid money for it, and I, it just, it was, it was this way without doing anything. So thank God the 80s came around because big hair was just naturally how I was living. Like, it just was part of me. But it was so curly, and um, it, I couldn't do anything with it. I, it just was, it was this, like, ginormous head of hair that I just sucked up the oxygen when I walked in the room. It just, like, it was... My hair entered the room first, let's just say. It well, did. It, it I did. think it's I think it's a very good look you should bring back. We've shared mine before with a stick on tuxedo where you just sort of like walk in and stick it on and move on. Yeah. And yeah, good times. Good times. Okay, extreme close ups, <laughs> also good times. Let's chat about today's show. So Woo! folks, if you're looking for a much needed Memorial Day weekend getaway, guess what? Moody Gardens set to open this weekend. We have details on how you can have a clean, safe and fun time with your family. I love that. We love Moody Gardens. And also, let's get that summer body ready from laser hair removal to reducing the appearance of cellulite and toning up problem areas like the tummy. The latest innovations and treatments to get you ready for summer at the Institute of Anti-Aging. We love them. We miss seeing them. Plus, y'all, we have special offers and details on their upcoming virtual open house. And by the way, shh. And let you on a little secret. They're going to have a deal on Botox, $11 a unit. Sounds good to me. And after the break, a special Zoom cooking class. One of our coworkers shares an authentic Indian dish with a little help from her dad. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. If you have been searching for a new recipe and want to get it in the kitchen, we've got a good one for you. It's a quick and easy Indian dish that's sure to spice up your cooking game. Neorika Vishwakarma, who works in our sales department, tried her hand at the recipe with a little help from her dad. Hey guys, my name is Neorika. Um, I am a multimedia sales planner at KPRC, and this is my dad. Hi, I'm Raj Vishwakarma. And uh, today we are going to make a traditional dish from northern part of India. We call it chuda butter. Very nice and tasty. So to start with, um, we kind of like have all of our ingredients here. So you'll need a half a bunch of cilantro, about an inch of ginger, two cloves of garlic, and three green chilies. Now with green chilies though, like my family loves spicy. I do not do spicy. <laughs> For those of you that like spicy, you can put as many as you want, really. The other things needed are two cups of green peas. These are frozen and we have defrosted them. And we have two cups of flattened rice. So flattened rice is called a uh, poha. So with that, you can get that any kind of like Indian store, but if you don't have it, you can also make it without. So we have the heat on a medium flame and we put olive oil in this about two tablespoons. So while we're over there, I'm getting started on making our little chutney paste. So chutney is obviously you, you eat uh, as like a side dish in a lot of um, Indian cuisines, but what a lot of people don't know is like you can't actually cook it, right? 
but when you cook it, it kind of just gives it like more of a earthy flavor and it just adds like a stain to it, which I love. So when did you eat this papa growing up? I remember eating it first time when I was eight years old. And my mom used to make this always when I went for something important, some auspicious thing. It's like a reward. Yeah. And then can you get like the peas everywhere all the time? Because I know every time I go to India, I, I love going to the markets because it's like always fresh and it's just so different here. Well, that's one thing. In India, we get peas only in the months of winter. But now you can get it anytime because of the frozen food. So the most important thing in an Indian kitchen is the masala. So this is a masala dabba where we have all different kinds of masalas. We have turmeric, coriander, cumin paste, mustard seeds. So this is something you'll find in most of the Indian kitchen. And if you don't have one, then your kitchen is incomplete. <laughs> I remember when I went to college, I didn't have my dabba, so I was just like scouring pretty much all the Indian markets all around just to find little individual packets just to live. And then finally, my parents came to the rescue and like saved me from bland food. <laughs> Do I need to put water in this? Yeah, need some water. Need more water. <laughs> Mom, I need you. Oh no! He always cooks too fast for me. We have our chutney, finally. <laughs> you just add straight to the oil, right? Yeah, including masala. Lucky that sizzle's always the best sound. After this, you need to add the peas. I have always noticed that Indian peas actually taste a lot different it than does. Um, American peas. Here in are more sweeter compared to the Indian ones. Oh, very sweet. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Patience yeah. is the name of the game. Is this ready? Yeah. How much should I put? That's it. Okay. Well, of course, salt is to taste. Makes me so nervous. Usually it's like one spoon of this, not a tablespoon, so it's like best judgment of all the time. So learning how to cook really took me a while. She's learning the dish for the first time, but She's a very good cook. I started teaching Naharika cooking when she was eight years old. And uh, she has learned a lot of dishes. The taste is excellent. Oh, I think you're just building me up a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> so the next step would be to add water to it. So we would generally add two cups of water to this. Something to do, just reuse the same thing and get all of the chutney out of it. So now what I'll do is I'll just increase the flame so it starts boiling. It smells great. Mm. Mm. Is this boiling now? Yeah, I think so. So okay. we're going to add the flattened rice to it now. Put it? Yeah. Do you usually eat it for like lunch, dinner? I know I like it for breakfast. Like this is usually for breakfast because it is the the dish that takes shortest amount of time to cook. And a little spicy in the morning gets your metabolism going, right? Uh, you can eat it with onions, yeah. on like garnishing onions on that. This is, we call it uh, a fursan. It's made out of chickpeas flour. So this can be a side dish to it. That's it, right? <clears throat> then, then we are done. I wish you guys could smell the flavors and, and enjoy it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll have uh, Naharika make this dish one time and take you to the station so you guys can taste it. <laughs> yes. All right, so we'll just grab some plates and then, right? Yeah. Okay. Here's the bro. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, right there. Put it here. Take this one, Dylan. <laughs> Takes the whole family to set this laptop up. First. <laughs> <laughs> all for joining us. We hope you would cook this dish and enjoy it like we do. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye. They did such a great job, and I think I need to see Dad in more cooking segments. Yeah. He did awesome, and I'm so hungry. I love Indian food, right? Yeah, great duo. And it's fun to see uh, Nairika's home and family. Very nice.
I know. Thanks for sharing your table with us. We appreciate it. For the full recipe, you guys, head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. And still to come on Houston Life, we are sending a special shout out to some local high school seniors, plus how your senior can enter for a chance to win a $2,020 gift card to Kroger. That's next. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. This is our favorite time of the show. We get to highlight our student artist um, for my work at home HL sign. And today's artist is fourth grader Chloe, and she is from Sugarland. And clearly she got the memo that I love me some tie dye, right? This is so beautiful. I love the color combination. Thank you so much, Chloe. I think she did a fabulous job. Nicely done, Chloe. And you've probably heard by now KPRC Channel 2 is recognizing the class of 2020 with our senior yearbook sponsored by Kroger. Let's get started today with a shout out to Isabella Estrada. Isabella is graduating from Heights High School. She hopes to attend the University of Houston to pursue a career in nursing. And next is Kayla Burrows, and Kayla has loved math since sixth grade with her favorite teacher, Mrs. Hall. She's going to Sam Houston State University to follow in Mrs. Hall's footsteps. She wants to come back to Oak Ridge after she graduates to teach math. And this is Stephanie Cedillo. Stephanie is involved in everything from National Honor Society to Baking Club at Klein Oak. Very nice. She plans to major in interior design. <clears throat> And congratulations to all of our graduating seniors. You can be a part of our senior yearbook as well. Just visit clicktohouston.com and search senior yearbook. And a reminder that everyone who submits their picture has the chance to win a $2,020 gift card to Kroger in honor of the year 2020. And of course, a special thanks to our friends at Kroger for making KPRC Channel 2's senior yearbook possible. After the break on Houston Life, if you've been dreaming of a getaway, Moody Gardens is just a short drive away. It'll reopen this weekend. What you need to know before heading down to the island. Well, welcome back. Let's be real, y'all. After a couple of months stuck at home, your family needs a break. Everybody needs a break, right? That's why we're so happy to know that Moody Gardens is opening this weekend. And it's such a great option because it's nearby, but it feels like a total escape. Joining us now with details on what we can expect, Jerry Hamachek, Marketing Director with Moody Gardens. Jerry, it's great to see you there in front of the Penguins. And uh, give us sort of the timeline because I understand the golfing, uh, the hotel, and the attraction sort of are opening on a rolling basis this weekend. Yeah, um, so our golf course is already open. So if you enjoy golf, we've got a fantastic golf course. So you can set up your tee times whenever you're ready. And um, our hotel actually opens tomorrow. So that's Friday for the hotel. And then Saturday is a big day for the attraction. So um, Memorial Day weekend is our big time for everybody to just uh, come and see us. And, you know, we do understand that immediately may not be the time for everybody, but whenever the time is right for you, we want you to feel welcome. And we've got all the protocols, everything in order here to make everybody feel safe and have all things covered and reminders about social distancing so you can just relax and have a great time. What I think is so great is the show happening right behind you, Jerry, the Penguins. That's always a wonderful attraction. You've got one up by your head. They're swimming back and forth. It's amazing. Let's talk about everything that's open because when, if you can go this weekend, you are not going to miss out on anything because the Penguins is definitely the place to start. The attractions are all open. Yes, um, there's a few that are not, but most of them are. And, uh, you know, when we're walking through the aquarium, I do believe that the animals have missed us. So that's, I think that's what's going on back here. <laughs> um, so the, the aquarium pyramid is open. The rainforest pyramid will be open. 3D theater, the 4D theater, our 20,000 leagues interactive adventure, our Colonel paddle wheel boat. Those are all opening. Um, and we want everybody to have a great time enjoying all that. There's a few things that are not open. Um, currently, water parks in the state of Texas are not cleared to open quite yet. So Palm Beach is not open. Um, we also have our Discovery Pyramid, the museum upstairs with the Skeletown exhibit. That's kind of a high touch zone along with our zip line and our ropes course that are not opening. We feel like we don't really need to take that step quite yet. It's just a high touch zone and just on the, the on the side of caution we're being careful there so those will come later but not quite yet 
And Jerry, every time I come down to Moody Gardens, I always wish I had more time. So my advice is whenever you all are planning on going down, allow yourself enough time because even the attractions we've seen before, it's kind of nice to go back and see things again. Talk to us about the new Dinos Alive exhibit because that's one I have not seen. That's the Dinosaurs Alive exhibit um, is fantastic. When we've got about 20, two dozen, um, 20, 24 different animatronic dinosaurs. And imagine you just uh, are, you're in the Jurassic jungle and you're wandering around and as you're seeing these different giant dinosaurs, you're gonna see a T-Rex, Triceratops, all these guys are in there moving and you know, every kids love dinosaurs so they really come to life as you're walking through this jungle atmosphere and it's also outdoors we've got it under a tent so it's kind of a nice feeling while you're outdoors enjoying all of that and it's a whole lot of fun and i'm not sure well, if jerry I let's talk about some of the safety members Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, let's talk about some of the safety measures that are in place, too, because I know so many people are excited to get out, as we said in the beginning, that, you know, we've all been stuck at home, we're ready for a change of, change of scenery, um, and you want to make this experience just wonderful for all the guests that are coming to Moody Gardens. So what do you all have in place? Yeah, we, we do want everybody to be able to relax and feel comfortable. That's what your experience is all about here at Moody. So we're taking care of all the details. We've got a comprehensive health and sanitation program that we put in place. So sanitization, it's at the top of the list. Our employees are being tested each day with temperature tests as they're coming in um, for their safety and our guest safety. So um, we've got planned plenty of options here as you're going through, you're gonna be able to uh, you know, make sure that your hands are clean. Um, we've got sanitization, uh, opportunities all around the property and uh, we've got a lot of signage around just to remind you you know the, the kids might be with you so you're going to see some floor graphics some signage around just reminding reminding you to practice social distancing wash your hands and you know all the practices that we've been learning over the last couple of months and those are just there to remind you that we want to have fun and do it in a safe kind of way We've got some other practices in, in place here too. So we've just implemented a cashless uh, policy here. So and people to purchase their tickets online. You can purchase them here, but we recommend you do that online. Same with your hotel reservations and your tea times uh, for the golf course. But by using those credit cards, it's just less physical contact. And those are steps that we can take just to be a little bit extra cautious. We've also uh, taken into consideration all the guidelines that are set forth through the governor's office for capacity restrictions. So we're probably a little bit on the conservative side of what's allowed there. And again, just doing that to make it um, safe, uh, safe, clean, and fun. That's what we're all about. And Jerry, we are out of time, but we should point out that if you do enjoy your trip, you can take that ticket price, apply it toward an annual membership, which pays for itself if you're going to go a few times. Jerry Hamachek, it's great to see you. Thanks for your time. Congrats on the reopening. And to our viewers, if you would like to book tickets or for more information, you can call 409-744-4673 or visit their website, moodygardens.org. Jerry, thanks again. Thank you. Great to see you. After the break from laser hair removal to the latest innovations in body contouring, a look at the treatments that can help you get that body summer ready. That's coming next. Summer is coming and that means we're getting our bodies ready for some water and fun, right? We're also gonna start shedding our clothing and when we do that, we think, uh-oh, should have gotten laser hair removal or maybe should have worked out a little bit more. Well, no better place to be than the Institute of Anti-Aging. And let's talk about that C word. I'm talking about cellulite and there's the latest and greatest treatment to get rid of it. Let's go take a look at how it works. Okay, we are taking a look at Vela Shape and how that works. The treatment is going on right now. Natalie is working on Brittany. Natalie, tell us all about Vela Shape. What are you doing? So she's concerned with the cellulite on the back of her legs. So Vela Shape uses radio frequency, infrared, 
suction and massage to help relax and smooth out those fibrous bands that cause the dimpling on the back of the thigh. Okay, normally when I hear cellulite, I think, oh well, tough luck, doesn't matter what you do. This is something that we can do that actually shows a difference? Yeah, because it stretches out those bands and it helps smooth the appearance of them. Plus, the radio frequency and infrared stimulate collagen and elastin, helping with skin laxity and make it look firmer and tighter. About how many treatments do you think we need? Typically for cellulite, you need six treatments, and then maintenance is once every six to eight weeks. Okay, and recommended a clean diet and working out during this time, right, to help kind of smooth out that process, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I know that you're doing this. That's a big handle. It's on the back of the thighs. Is there another body part that this would work well on? Yes, we do have a smaller applicator head, and that one we can help tighten um, the skin on the abdomen, and we can also do the arms. Okay, and then you switch. So about how long for each leg? So for the back of the thigh, um, for this area, we'll do 15 minutes. Okay, this is how you get rid of cellulite. Sign me up. Cool tone, listen to this. It's one of the latest and greatest when you are talking about getting that six pack. How about doing, you know, 20,000 crunches in 30 minutes? Nobody has time for that, but you've got time for Cool Tone. Dr. Richard Laconi, you guys are one of the only people that has this machine in Houston. This is really incredible. That's right, yes. We've been waiting for this to arrive. It's like Christmas exactly. in March. Okay, we've got Mark, our victim. I'm sorry, I mean our patient. And he is going through this right now, and we can see his abs moving. Explain how this process works. Well, it uses a electromagnetic impulse device that makes the muscle contract involuntarily. And they do it in a way that it cycles it so fast that the muscle's just literally contracting so fast. You don't really, you feel the muscle contracting, but you don't feel pain. And recommended about four treatments? The standard is four treatments followed by maintenance a couple of times a year. Okay. Oh, and it's all, it's just that session and it really depends on, we look at this machine and we see the number here, this output, and about 45%, that's the applicator. And so right. you can go up a little higher depending on if you can stand. All the way to 100. Oh and boy. Everyone can. I mean, you know, it's it's very doable. It's very, it's, it's easily tolerable. There's absolutely no pain involved. Um, it's, you stay very tight, squeezing, clenching up the abdominal muscles. It just tightens up your core. It helps with your tie and works you know, if you have lower back issues. Just having a strong, tight core. And no downtime. And who doesn't have time for 20,000 crunches in 30 minutes? Exactly. I think it's a win-win. It's a pretty good deal. It really is cool. We are now in the cool sculpting room. This technology has been around for at least a decade. We're back with Natalie. And let's yes. talk about cool sculpting because I think a lot of people are familiar with it, but mm -hmm. talk about the changes over the years. So we have the newest cool, so uh, cool sculpting machine, which has faster treatment times. Um, the original one had an hour per applicator. This one's 35 minutes to 45 minutes. And today we have Julie here, who's a new mama, nine months postpartum, and she came to you saying, mm -hmm. help. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trying to get her bikini body ready. Okay. And so this is also treatment um, you could do under the chin, thighs, mm -hmm. abs. We're looking at the tummy right now, yes. right? Yes. Um, so with her, we are right now treating the abdomen. Later on, we might think about doing the left handles. Um, but right now, she is concerned with her lower abdomen and the upper abdomen. And that, explain to us the markings here, because that has to be done <laughs> before you put the applicator on. So earlier, before you also came here, we marked her. So this is going to be one applicator. This is going to be a second applicator and then we're doing a third applicator up here for that upper abdomen. Okay, why don't you go ahead and get started and okay. we can see how the process works. It's about 35 to 45 minute treatments depending on the area and the applicator that is being used. The good thing while you're sitting here, you get the treatment done and then you go home, you go about your business. Mm -hmm. There's zero downtime. Zero downtime. Okay, so what is this? So this is the protective gel pad. Um, I did already do the pre-treatment wipe. So we're doing this, and all that's doing is protecting the skin against the cold. And then ready, one, two, three. 
Now you're Perfect. placing the applicator on there, yeah, making sure she's comfortable. Yes. You were saying the upgrading the technology. What is the difference here? Because I know a lot of times people would say, I can't breathe or this hurts. This is totally different now. So with this one, it does get one degree colder, so you actually have the shorter treatment time, but it also doesn't have this intense suction. And when, do, when should she see some results here? So she's gonna do one treatment today, and then in 30 to 45 days, she'll do her second treatment, and she'll start to see results um, about eight to 12 weeks after that, she'll be at her full results. And we've already seen Cool Tone, sort of that mm -hmm. machine doing the abs. Yes. We could do these com combined together, but you'd have to do this, this one first. If you yes. have some, to get rid of To get baby. rid of that subcutaneous fat, and then you can tone the muscle afterwards. Okay, sounds good. Enjoy your downtime. Thank you. <laughs> well, this isn't awkward at all. I'm sitting here waiting because <laughs> I am doing laser hair removal. Nancy is at the helm of the Hello. laser. Yes. I'm gonna put my goggles on. I think you need to as well. I do. But I have to tell you, doing laser hair removal for my underarms has been a game changer. Because yes. I used to get so irritated. I would have dry skin and razor itchy, bumps. razor bumps. Yes. And this is a game changer. I noticed a huge difference the very first session yes. of laser hair removal. Yes, it's great. There's no downtime. Uh, it's great for all skin types meaning light, dark, tan, um, and it's uh, virtually painless. It feels like a hot stone massage. And usually we recommend six to nine treatments. So. And you're done. And you're done. I also did my face, but I saved you that today. So we're gonna get started on the lovely underarm. Nancy's gonna yes. go ahead and get started. And I most am. people t typically ask me, is it painful? I don't want to do it. I don't think I can stand the pain. And I have to tell you, I mean, Nancy described it as a hot stone massage. Yes. I'll take that and then add in a few rubber band snaps. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. And there's some warmth that goes along with it, but that's it. And I have to tell you, the thin, like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I have dark hair. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna work for me. And that's not the case, that's right? That's not the case. In fact, the, dark hair, the darker the hair, the better. Uh, it doesn't really work on uh, the gray hairs, so do it before you get gray. Right. <laughs> and let's talk about um, men, because yes. men like this treatment as well. They do. So it's great for the back, uh, in between the brows, if you have kind of that unibrow thing going. Right. Uh, chest. Um, so I think um, and neck, lower belly, anything, yeah. lower neck, their face, Absolutely. all those areas. Yes. Okay, and it's not too late because summer, I know everybody's going to start thinking about wearing sleeveless or showing mm -hmm. their arms and all kinds of things. Get this done now, right? Get this done now. So okay. You can, yeah. So you can get it in. Okay, well, I'm going to continue my session. I'm just going to say goodbye now because, Hi. you know, this isn't awkward. <laughs> Funny how things just happen like that, right? Mm -hmm. We do want to mention that, of course, we filmed that story pre-COVID-19 and before social distancing was really a thing. We do want to tell you that the Institute of Anti-Aging is back open for patients, and they offer a variety of services outside of body treatments, including Botox, hydrofacials, microneedling, and the list goes on and on. And their staff is planning to host a virtual open house on June 3rd from 4 to 6 p.m. This will happen on Instagram Live and Facebook Live with live live treatment demonstrations, Q&As, and giveaways. You can just call their office if you'd like to register. And you can get 20% off body treatments right now at the Institute of Anti-Aging, as well as Botox for $11 per unit. To book an appointment, simply call them at 713-807-1000 or log on to antiageinstitute.com. Com. One of our favorite spots in town. Coming up next on Houston Life, everything you need to know about Red Nose Day and its mission to end child poverty. Also, how you can get involved by posting your own Red Nose Day picture right after this. Welcome back. Did you know in America, nearly 20% of children live in poverty? Red Nose Day was founded in 1988 with a mission to end poverty around the world. And there is an NBC Red Nose Day special happening tonight. The proceeds raised will help children around the world, including youth right here in Houston. Here with more is Executive Director of Covenant House, Leslie Bourne. Leslie, it's great to see you. And we're going to get to the fantastic work that you all do at Covenant House, because I know a lot of young people are supported by your work. Let's just uh, highlight Red Nose Day to begin. And this, it really is incredible that nearly $200 million has been raised since the beginning, 25 million children touched. So tell us what we can expect uh, to raise, hopefully tonight. Is there a specific dollar amount? 
Uh, I do not know. I wish I did know that dollar amount. I, I um, and don't know that uh, at this time. I don't. But I know that we are so very grateful to be one of their charity partners because our missions are so aligned. Uh, the Red Nose Day organization, their mission is to lift youth and, and children out of poverty. And Covenant House's mission is to lift youth out of homelessness. And, and one of the root causes of homelessness is poverty. So we're such perfect partners for each other. So we're very excited uh, and support everything they do. Well, it's so great because tonight, as we said in the intro, Leslie, that NBC is the official broadcast partner for the Red Nose Day programming. And um, there, it kicks off tonight at 7 p.m. with Celebrity Escape Room. And there's all kinds of, of big celebrity names. And when something like this happens on this type of platform, it really is what it does to a fundraising um, activity is really enhance it and that's the whole point is getting it out into people's minds and forefront that even five bucks can help it absolutely absolutely anything anything helps it's such a wonderful organization and we're going to see more poverty we're going to see more homelessness after during and, and after this pandemic we know that those numbers are going to spike and, and so we all need to be prepared to be able to take in more youth and, and help more youth and, and prevent them um, from you know again becoming homeless and, and lift them up out of poverty and Leslie, Covenant House has locations in many cities around the world. Let's talk about what's happening right here in Houston. Uh, we've mentioned on the show before, sometimes when it comes to just basic needs like housing, uh, food, those are things that a lot of us take for granted. And right now I understand you have 57 youth who are in your care. We do. Um, it, it's it's a little bit of a different time. We are housing about 57 to 60 right now. Normally, uh, it's a different time because of the pandemic. Normally, we have about 100 uh, youth on our campus every night. We usually take in 20 to 25 emergency overnights uh, that sleep on mats. They come in off the street. We can't do that right now and practice safe distancing. Um, we put our campus on lockdown at, uh, or in early March, and our youth have been amazing. And uh, so we're keeping it around 60 just so we can practice that six foot distancing in their bedrooms and, and throughout our campus and throughout the way our buildings are built um, and to keep everybody safe. So for us uh, going forward, and it's not really a challenge. It's an opportunity of how we learn to do our mission in different ways and reach the youth that are out there in more creative ways. And, and that is so true, Leslie. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, Red Nose Day funds these programs for you, for Covenant House, year round. So not only, um, you know, the need is here, but you're seeing an increased need during this time dealing with the pandemic, right? We are, we are Courtney, Courtney, and we're on, uh, uh, we're very closely working uh, every day with our partners in the homeless world in Houston, and we all talk behind the scenes and, and know who's out there and trying to find a place to, to, to put a youth or, or a homeless adult. And um, the need, what we all agree on in the shelter world is that there is gonna be a huge influx of homeless youth and homeless adults coming down the road mm -hmm. and that we have to be prepared to be able to serve them. Yeah, and we know that so many organizations who are doing great work like yours, I'll say they are, they are being hit hard right now. Yes. Of course, the need does not go away, right, during a time like this. So Red Nose Day is something that, Courtney, you and I have talked about on the show before. And Leslie, I know that in years past mm -hmm. at Walgreens, people were able to buy a physical red nose, uh, and then the money used, those proceeds went back to the cause. This year, because of social distancing, those noses can be downloaded digitally so people can share them on their social media that's pretty cool I didn't know that at the beginning and when I learned that earlier we're gonna do that to, tonight with our youth we, we hope we can get them to watch you know uh, uh, safe distance and watch the the show tonight but also be able to digitally download the red noses we think that would be pretty cool for them it's really great and it's it's one way of course it's what our lives depend on now social media and it's one way to say you know what i did it i was able to get the red nose uh i did it i know derek you did it i mm -hmm. connor and i did it it was so much fun and it's such a um a recognizable campaign and very easy to do 
I think you'll see a lot of red noses on our Facebook page. <laughs> I hope so. Leslie Bourne, <laughs> Executive Director of Covenant House. Keep up the good work. We got our fingers crossed. Millions will be raised tonight. And you can support yes. Red Nose Day and help children in need by visiting NosesOn.com to donate and unlock your own digital red nose. Leslie, thanks again. Thank you so much. Great to see you. And make sure to get it right here. Keep it right here to Channel 2. Tune in tonight for NBC's night of star-studded special programming. We'll be right back. And we want to share some more of our senior shout-outs sponsored by Kroger. Up first, here's Maya Petty. Maya is an AP student at, I believe, Carl Wunschie Career Academy High School. She speaks English and German and is interested in buildings and structures. She will go to LSU, LSC in the fall for architecture and finish her degree at U of H. And next we have Claren Joman. She is president of HOSA, the medical organization at her school, and she plans to pursue nursing as a career. Congratulations. Very nice. And last but not least, we have Max Garner. Max is a senior at Pearland High School and is a member of the Euler golf team. Max is attending San Jacinto College, then transferring to the University of Houston. And congratulations to all of our graduating seniors. You can be part of our senior yearbook as well. Just visit clicktohouston.com and search senior yearbook. And just a reminder, everyone who submits their picture has the chance to win a $2,020 Kroger gift card. Special thanks to Kroger for making KPRC Channel 2's senior yearbook possible. And Courtney, we had a lot of fun today on this Friday Eve on Houston Life. Almost Friday. We certainly did. It was great to see you. Watch that Red Nose programming, you know, tonight. The escape room, lots of fun. See you tomorrow. Great to see you.